Welcome to the Black Spray Hood podcast. Today we're interviewing Rena Mills, a cultural and heritage guide from the island of Kariakou, one of the three inhabited islands that make up uh, Grenada. So Rena, what can you tell us about Kariakou? I can tell you that. I know you probably would have heard this before when you arrived here, that Kariakou is the best place in the world. I don't mean to take away from anyone else, but Kariakou, um, we are pretty small. We are the largest Grenadine island. We're just 13 miles square. The people here, we are very, very friendly. And you, they'll treat us family. The people are very welcoming. They're very hospitable. Karakou is also very safe. Karakou, and when I speak of Karakou, I also mention our sister island, Pitimadnik. Very, very safe. You can walk the streets um, without with money in your hand, you can leave your doors open, you can wander at night, you can sit in your room or sleep with your doors and windows open, it's very safe. The crime rate is very, very low. And I think that those are some of the reasons why people love Canada. Yeah, we've really been enjoying our time here. Can you tell us what are some of the important cultural traditions that you have here? We started from, if I can speak from, since the days of the plantation, there are many traditions which were handed down to us by our four parents. We were once inhabited by the French and later on the British. So we can speak of and uh, Karakou and Pitimantnik, we are the mecca of culture. As a matter of fact, we are known as the cradle of culture because of these many traditions which we still practice to date, which is very, very authentic. and. Yes, we are part of Grenada, but I can say that we are even more authentic than the traditions which are practiced in Grenada, some of which are Shakespeare Mass. The portrayal of Shakespeare Mass, I don't know if you have ever heard of it, but Karakou is the only place in the world where one can witness this type of Mass. More or less, it happens on Carnival Tuesday morning, and this Mass stems from since the days of plantation colorfully dressed masqueraders reciting lines from William Shakespeare from the book of Julius Caesar. And with a fumble of a line, they receive a bull because the bull form part of the uniform. This is the whip which they hold in their hand during the portrayal of the mass. So Shakespeare mass, it is authentic to carry coup. Carnival Tuesday morning, everyone comes out in the glory, whether it be men, whether it be women, whether it be children, the entire community comes out to participate in this. And people will tell you, I remember my grandparents and old people, they would say to you, I remember my grandparents or my great grandparents doing it and we're continuing in the legacy. We also have a big drum dance. We are from African descent. So of course, this dance stem from the days of the plantation. Our four parents, the enslaved, they were given just one day to celebrate. And that one day, while they were dancing, they saw the similarities in the movements. And that's how they know which tribe they were from. So they were connecting to the tribe that came from Africa, because they came from Africa. So the tribe, so for example, we have the Ibu, the Temne. And when I speak of the Temne, I can also mention to you that in 2016, the Temne tribe from Africa came here to connect with the loved ones. Oh, and wow. I was part of that celebration. It was grand. Everything that we do here, the food that we cook, the, our dances, the things that we say, it is quite, quite similar to those of Africa. And that's the reason why we say we are all Africans. Um, so these are some, we have the quadrille dance, the English quadrille dance. We have string band music. String band music, you would find it during, a lot during the Christmas season, going around from door to door and serenading. So we, we still practice quite a lot of traditions here. We also have our tombstone feast. Whenever someone dies, two years after they die, then a stone is erected in honor of that person with their name. And on that day, it is a celebration for the community as well. You do not have to be invited to attend the celebration. So it starts early in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, with the hoisting of the stone, um, the wetting of the ground, because libation forms part of our culture as well, throwing rum and water on the ground in honor of our ancestors. So we have many traditions which are practiced today and are still authentic. 
and to speak about it, it will take the entire day. Wow, <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned that there's um, connections with um, some peoples in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, do people in Kariakou Kari come from particular areas in Africa? Has that West Africa. From, all from West Africa? From West Africa. Um, from West Africa. Um, Sierra Leone. Yeah, because I saw in the museum that they had the exhibition just on Sierra Leone. So. Yeah. Right, and those were the tribe who visited us in 2016 from Ghana. Uh huh. Right. Okay. Yeah. And how do um, people who um, keep in contact with, with with people in Sierra Leone and Ghana and um, the connection it is not there per se, but when we speak of West Africa, we remember the enslaved who came here to work on our plantations. I know that many people who have money, who have finance, they go to Africa to see where their four parents came from. We speak of, right, so we speak of the Ilmina Castle and people will tell you that they went there just to see what it was, or where they kept the enslaved before sending them off to, to the different islands. And it is something that is dear to them, something that is authentic to them. And those are the memories that we cannot take away from, that they cannot take away from us. I want to go to Africa too. I would just want to go there to experience, um, just to walk into the building where my, my four parents were kept, just forming part of that memory. Others speak of it, it is dear to them, it is something that they'll remember forever. Some people speak of how emotional they were when they got to Africa. So one day I would really like to go and experience that yeah. myself. <laughs> well, we, we went to a, a maroon ceremony in, in the village of Bogles. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what is a maroon ceremony? Okay, so a maroon, a maroon is a freedom the feast, it is something that we still keep to date. The, what we refer to now as villages, they were once plantations. So everything that you see in Karakou, they were once plantations, walked by the enslaved. If you remember me saying to you before that, they were given one day to celebrate. And that one day, they formed themselves into unity to cook. Besides that, a maroon is a free slave or runaway slave. During the days of the plantation, it was very hard for them staying there, labor for nothing at all. So some of them, they ran into the bushes, they hid themselves, ran into the bushes, ran into the hills and formed themselves into groups, which they refer to as the maroons. While there, they cooked together, they danced together. And this is what we still practice and this is what it is dead to us and we still celebrate to date. Right, so just take that. This is what we celebrate to date, yeah. the maroon. So the maroon is held in different villages. As I said, there were once estates. So it is held in different villages to date. Um, it starts in Karakou, it starts, I know it starts with the Mount Pleasant of Maroon and it ends with the Bogus Maroon. So you happen to see the uh, final Maroon, okay. which is held in Karakou during the season. Right. It is done mostly in the dry season and it is more or less asking our ancestors for blessing, asking our ancestors for rain because here it is very dry. So it consists of very early in the morning, just a minute. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's very, very. It starts very, very early in the morning, six o'clock, because the enslaved they woke very early to go to the plantations. So it starts as, as we say, the crack crow. It starts then with the blowing of the shell, a conch shell. When everyone hears that conch shell, they know that the maroon is going to start. Following that will be the libation, the wetting of the ground, throwing rum and water, but they must throw the water on the ground first before the spirits mm. um, in honor of our ancestors, of course. Following that immediately will be the cooking of the food, the maroon food, smoke food as we call it, or the saraka is the traditional dish of Karakou. 
it consists of everything because it is an African dish. It consists of everything from our farm, everything from our garden. So there's rolled rice, rice, white rice, is cooked softly and rolled into balls. We do not grow rice in Karakou, but because it is an African dish, hence the reason why the rice forms part of that meal. We also cook cornmeal. Cornmeal is from corn, of course, yeah. as they call it maize. So the corn is grown into our garden, it is dried, it is grind fine, and then it is cooked and roll into balls, which we refer to as rolls cool. There's also peas, so pigeon peas or dry peas as we call it. Stew peas, it forms part of the dish. And provision, or ground provision, yam, dashings, and also our bananas, green bananas, or plantain. Then there is the meat. As I said, it's everything from our farm. So there is pork from pig, mutton from sheep, our yard fall, which is grown in our yard. Yeah. A lot of people call it yardies. Okay. It's from part of the meal and sometimes beef. Okay. From cow. Okay, wow. And we saw that the, the whole community gets to eat for free. Okay. Um, I think somebody mentioned that the government supports this. There are many people who support it because, as you see, it is not an event where people pay. Yeah. So, the community or the committee that is hosting the Maroon, for example, in Bogos, uh, one of the features you saw, there are people in that community who will go out and ask for support in, in hosting the Maroon because everything comes with a cost. So you'll probably ask, and that is what happened long ago. You would probably ask someone for some peas, you would ask for some corn, you would ask for some money to get drinks because everything is given for free yeah. on, on that day. So hence the reason why different people come in um, and on support to, yeah. to the activity. Okay. No, I thought it was really such a lovely, inclusive yes. event. And um, with the music, they play the big drum. Can you explain what big drum is? Right. So big drum, as I said, it started from since the days of, of the plantation. In big drum, it shows the movement. So the hand movement, the waist movement, the feet movement, especially. There are different dances in the big drum dance. The dances are the different tribes which were brought here from Africa. So as I mentioned, so if you hear them in the opening, they would speak of Cromanti. So Cromanti was one of the strongest spirits during the days of the plantation. Um, it was very instrumental in the emancipation. So this is the song that is used to open the ring. So part of the Cromanti song. Then there is a Temne, you hear them say, Temneo. And most of the songs they're done in um, Patwa. They're done in Patwa. So you hear Temneo, Temneo. Since we're born, we never see Temneo. I Temneo. And they would dance to that. And there's Ibu. And the, the, in more or less, the different tribes which were brought here from Africa, when they dance, then these are the tribes that they celebrate. So more or less, it's. it's and during the big drum dance, there are three drums that are used um, for beating. So there is a cut drum and there are two side drums. And they would say to you that the cut drums, this is the loudest drum, this is this drum with the most rhythm. And more or less, it's just one big celebration in the movements and celebra in celebration and honor of our ancestors from Africa. And the dance that we saw, they had two white towels. Yes. What, what, what's the significance of that? Um, I know white is a sign of peace. Uh -huh. Right. So in most in most dances, they'll use a, a white flag, I mean, a white rag, sorry, yeah. for dancing. And with the movement of the rag, more or less, is the tribe from Africa. So there are some dances that you probably would have seen without the rag. Yes. And some, they dance with the rag. And even... Yeah. In stopping of the drum, I'm not sure if you saw that as well. Once they finish that dance, every every dancer, once that's the end of that tribe, the end of that song, they use this cut to go to the drum to stop it. So once they go over the drum, it covers the drum, uh -huh. then all musicians stop. Yeah. <laughs> and what about the long skirts? Yes, it's uh, it's just part of the uniform, as I said. Uh, well, as we differ 
different traditions as well. Um, for example, the Shakespeare mask, the colorfully dressed. So more or less, it's just demonstrating the different colors of our freedom, um, the long skirts for better movements and showing the flair and the glamour on that day of the dancers. Wow. So these, I can see that these traditions are really passed down through the community. Do students in school also learn about the, the African heritage? Of course. Um, it is something that is, it, is not, it does not form part of the school curriculum, but what I can say, I know there are many groups who go into the school um, to teach the culture. There are many groups as well who teach after school or even during the holiday season. There are many people in the diaspora who sponsor as well, um, send uniforms and cloths and materials so that uniforms can be sewn. I can make mention of a group which I form part of, the Caracol Culture Train String Band Group. It is a group every year during the month of July, during the summer break, for three weeks during, during July, um, we invite parents to send their children to the Bella Park, this is where it's held. Bella Park is also known as Maroon Village. And there the program is held on Monday to Friday from 9 to 12, where the children love the string band music. String band music, they have the string instruments, which came from Europe, and the African instrument, like the, 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 the drum, the percussion instrument, the um, shak shak, the tok tok, the iron, the learn to play that. And on Fridays, the learn to do the dances. So the English quadrille, the European dances, and also the African dances, the big drum dances. So they learn to do that during the during the close of um, the school vacation. Oh, that's really good that the, the students get... Of course, we get. have to continue the legacy of our full parents. As yeah. you often hear people say, we're born and made it, and we must continue what our full parents left up for us. Yeah. So we must pass it on. We wouldn't be here forever. Now the children are growing. This yeah. is the right place to start with them. Yeah. And once it is with them, we know it is there for another century or so. Do you think that Karaoke is more connected to these traditions than other Caribbean islands? Caribbean, all the Caribbean islands, they of course they do have something in common. The fact that this, uh, our enslaved, our full parents came from Africa. So there are similarities. For example, the traditional wedding in Karaoke when someone's going to get married, then the community forms part of that in the meeting up the morning of the wedding but the family of the bride and the groom, the dance is the cake, the dance is the flag with string band music. Then you would see that happening in St. Vincent, for example, the Grenadine Island of, of Union. Um, but more or less, they use big drum music instead of string band. So it is something that is spread throughout the Caribbean. I hope I don't sound to bias if I say that it is more authentic in Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> Karyaku in three words that would you would want to attract tourists to come and visit. What what would those three words be? Um, <laughs> three words. So a culture, of course. Um, culture. Uh huh. Culture. The people. The people. And um, the environment. The fact that environment. Uh, the the fact that Karyaku is pristine, it is pure, and recently, I'm not sure if you heard that, that we were voted the best beach in the Caribbean. Really? Paradise Beach. How did I think? In the U.S.'s top reader's choice. Our very own. 30 square miles, Caraco, very small. We were voted the best beach in the Caribbean, and it's because we're not taking away anything from it. The old rustic look, just there, and someone come on Paradise Beach, they can get food to eat, they can get drinks and just the old way of, of it being what it is, I think that is part of the reason why it won. Many, many beaches nowadays you see so many investments taking place, mm. but then no, we do not want that, we just want it to remain just the way it is and I think that's one of the reasons why. Another thing is that on Paradise Beach at no point you would find large gathering. 
went swimming on the beach. So, of course, after COVID, when people travel, mm. they want to go to somewhere where they know, of course, the water is pristine, the place is nice, um, the island is very clean, um, the beach is very clean as well, nice white sand beach. I want to go somewhere where I can swim, knowing that there would not be a crowd. And I think that's one of the reasons why Paradise Beach won again and what makes Caracol stand out. Wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're most welcome. I hope I gave you the information. That, that is amazing. Is, oh, thank no, you. No, really, really interesting. No, thank you. Thank you.